Hi guys and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to set up, install and configure NCB GET as a Docker container on Unraid. We will set up the container, configure it and also see how to help make sure downloads complete. So let's get started. OK, so today we're going to install and configure NZBGET as a Docker container on Unraid. Now NZBGET, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a download client which works with NZB files on Usenet, hence its name NZBGET. Now let me quickly explain what an NZB file is. Well an NZB file is basically the Usenet equivalent of BitTorrent's torrent file. It's a file that points to all the various parts of a file on Usenet. And so when it's completed, it puts all of the parts together, creating that file. The NZB GET is a great download client because it's very fast and it's written in C++. It's got some really nice features and a great looking web UI. Right, so before we go ahead and install this container, let's just check the shares we have created on our Unraid server. Now obviously we're going to need a download share, but if we have a cache drive, it's important to set it to enable cache yes, because this will mean that files will be downloaded to the cache drive first, and then processed and extracted there. And this takes the where off the array. Later, the files will be moved off the cache by either Mover when it runs, or by other media containers that are using ncbget, such as Sonar or Radar. When it's installed, ncbget will create its own subfolders, five of them, in the download share, but we'll come back to that later. So let's install the container, and to do that as always, we're going to use Community Applications. Now, if you can't see the Apps tab, that means that you don't have Community Applications installed, and to install it is really easy. All you have to do is to click onto plugins and then click install plugin and then paste this URL in here. Now this URL you can also find in the description and then you just click on to install. Okay so now with community applications installed let's go to the apps tab and in the search bar we're going to type in ncbget. Now as you can see here there's a few different containers for ncbget but I'm going to be using binhex's one for this tutorial. So click on to install and this will bring up the docker template and there's a few things here that we have to fill in. So let's scroll down and what we have to change here is the data path. Now this data path relates to where our downloads are going to go and you can see by default it's set to go into our app data folder inside a subfolder called data. Now we want to change this to the download share that we created earlier. So let's browse for that and select it through the user share here. Now it's good practice nowadays to map all of your container paths through the user share. You may see some older info on the forums telling you not to do this, but that was a long time ago, and it's been fine to do this now for the last couple of generations of Unraid. So once we've done that, let's click on to apply, and then that will pull down the container. Okay, cool, that's done. And now we can see here that ncbget is running. So let's click onto it and then go to web UI. Now the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see we're going to need to have to log in. And the username is ncbget and the password is tegbzn6789. And that's ncbget backwards and then the port number. And so then just click log in. Okay, so this is our web UI. So first we need to click on to settings and we'll go through all of these sections one by one. So first let's click on to system. Here we can reload or restart ncbget, shut it down, make a backup of our settings and restore our settings etc. The bit here where it says update ncbget, don't update ncbget from inside the container. If you want to update the container we always do that from within Unraid. So you go on to your docker tab and just click on check for updates. And then update your containers by clicking on the update ready when you can see any that need updating. If you try and update through the container itself, it can cause issues. Okay, so now let's go on to web interface. Basically here we have various options which we can select that affect the look of the web interface. Um, I'd recommend just leaving everything as it is. 
Now let's move on to paths. Now the most important part here is the main directory here. This main directory is the root directory which all the other directories come off. And you can see here by default it's filled in with forward slash data. And this forward slash data, it relates to the container path here. So the forward slash data relates to the downloads folder that we mapped in the template of the Docker container earlier. And if we look here, we can see all of the other paths. And if you notice, all of them come off here, this main DIR, which is this part here. So all of these come off the main directory, which is forward slash data, and then these subfolders afterwards. This one here, for instance, the one called desk DIR, this is the destination directory for all of our completed download. So after our files are processed, they're put here. And the intermediate directory, this is where things are first downloaded to. So all of the parts of the files are downloaded to here, and then they're processed here and extracted, and then moved to the destination directory afterwards. So these two folders are the most important, the destination and the intermediate. And here are the various other directories as well, such as the NZB directory, which is where our NZB files go to. All of these we can just leave as default. Now maybe the most important section is our new servers section, and this is where we add our preferred Usenet providers. Now for server 1, that's where we want to add our main server. This is the Usenet server that we're going to be using all the time. And I think an excellent Usenet provider is a weaker. I've been using Aweka for a few years now and I find them really good, really fast speeds and really good retention. Um, in fact they've got the highest retention of all the providers at 3,336 days and their prices are really reasonable at 7.5 euros per month. Um, and if you sign up from the link in the description you'll get an extra 30 days for free as well. So first we have to name the server so put in the name here. And underneath here where it says level 0, this is the priority of our new server. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. So we want to leave that at 0. And here we want to leave group at 0 as well. And here we put in our host address. Um, for me that's news.awika.nl. And for port number, if your provider supports it, then I highly recommend that you use SSL. So for that we'd change the port number here, I'm using 563, but also we'd have to select the encryption button here to use encryption. Um, next we need to put in our username and our password, and then next the number of connections our server supports, and here the number of days retention. And then once we've filled everything in, we can click on test connection. Now here you can see we've got the option to add another server. So I'm going to click on that button now and I'm going to add a second server. But before I do, let me explain why I'm going to do this. So why would you want a second server? That's just going to be more expensive, right? Well yes it is, but not by very much. We're not going to subscribe to another provider monthly, we're going to buy a block account. So just a block of data which doesn't expire. And the cost of this is about 15 euros for 500 gigabytes. Now the reason we want this is because it really helps downloads complete. If a file isn't fully complete on our main server, NCB get will look for the missing parts on our backup server. And so between the two, it can get the whole 100%. So you may be wondering why there'd be missing parts anyway. Well let's take a file which has had a DMCA takedown issued against it. Well the Usenet provider has to comply with this, but they don't actually remove the whole file, just parts of it. That way they've complied with the order because the file doesn't actually complete now. Well this is where our second server comes in. We choose our second server on a different backbone to the primary one. Now that same file on our second server may also have the DMCA served on it as well and this provider has removed files to comply to, so it doesn't complete. But the chances are, they are different files, and so the missing ones on the first server, we can get from the second, and then the file completes. So most of the data comes from our primary provider, the one we pay for by the month for unlimited use, but the small missing files come from our prepaid block account, so very little data comes off that, and as a result, 
We rarely have to ever top up our block account. Okay, so let's set up the second server. And for my block account, I like to use a company called Usenet Farm. They're on a different backbone to Eureka, and I find they work really well together. And a 500 gig block is only 15 euros. And again, I have a link for this in the description. So again, here we fill in the name. Now here on our second server where it says level, we want to give this a one. And also if we scroll down to group, we also want to change that to a one as well. So by putting these numbers here to 1, it means that the second server has a lower priority than our main server. So this one will only be used at times when the articles can't be found on our primary server. And again we fill in the host address and use SSL, so we change the port number here. Turn the encryption on and pop in our username and password and let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and then we can press test connection and the connection is successful so now with our usenet providers put in let's click on save all changes and for changes to take effect we have to click on reload nzb get okay so let's carry on going through the settings let's click on to security and here we have things such as the IP that NCB get listens on and the control port number. So for the control IP and the control port, we need to leave that as it is. But if we want, we can change our username and our password for the web UI login. I'm going to leave mine as it is. And um, we can also set up a second restricted user here um, that has access to NCB get, but basically can't change any settings or do anything else. Okay, and now onto categories. By default, we've got four categories. We've got movies, series, music, and software. But we can add additional categories if we want to. If we scroll back up and look at movies, we can set the destination directory. So this is where all of the downloads in the movie category will go to. Um, by default, it's set to go in the destination directory. Um, if you remember, that's here. And then ntbget will create a subdirectory here with the name of the category, i.e. movies. Um, here we can set it to either unpack or not unpack the downloaded files. Um, obviously leave it on to yes. And here for extensions, here we can use various post-processing scripts. Okay, so aliases. Normally the category names are supplied by the NCB indexing site. So having aliases allows us to basically match up their categories with our own. Now when we're using media collection containers such as radar or sonar, we don't have to really worry about aliases. And that's because these containers will pass over the categories to NCB get. So here in radar for instance, we just have to make sure that the category here, movies, is the same as what it is in NCB get. And then all of the NCBs that radar sends over to NCB get will be categorized as movies. Okay, so next RSS feeds. Um, obviously you can just click on add feed here and add the various feeds to NCB get. And next, incoming NCBs, the append category directory here is set to yes. This toggles on and off whether the category directory is created in the destination directory for each category. So without this turned on, all of the categories would just go into the one directory. So I really suggest leaving this set to yes. So everything else in this section is pretty self-explanatory. And let's move on to download queue. And let's scroll down until we come to article cache. Now I suggest setting this to 200 megabytes. What this is, it's basically almost like a RAM drive where articles get downloaded into and it saves a lot of disk IO. And the direct write, just have that onto yes. And next write buffer, and I'm gonna set that to 1024. And everything else here, just leave as it is. Okay, and now onto connection. Again, this is all very self-explanatory if you read through, and I suggest you leave all of this as default. Now, logging and scheduler, just leave them as they are. Now, let's go on to check and repair. Now, I recommend on leaving all of this as it is, except for the power buffer here. I'm going to set mine to 200 megs. And now, on to unpack. Again, unless you have any reason not to, leave everything here as default. Okay, and let's click on save all changes and then reload NCB get. Okay, so that's everything set up. So now we better test downloading an NCB. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag an NCB file over onto the web UI and click submit. Okay, so that's downloading fine and everything's set up. And that brings us to the end of the video. And I'd just like to give a thank you to Stephen Stevens 
who sponsored me making this video and to all my other donators and patrons that have helped me over the last year. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful and if you did then please help me out and hit that like button and if you're not a subscriber already then why not subscribe to the channel. So whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, well I hope it's good and I'll catch you in another video.